Well, if you saw the last episode, you know that I had some uh, decisions to make when it came to the rear shoulder harnesses. I got the four-point shoulder harness kit, and there were some discrepancies in my mind on the drawing that showed it actually mounted further in the back because the drawing was made for the stole or the cruiser, which does not have a back seat. I felt that it put the shoulder harnesses in direct eyesight of the rear passenger, or potentially in the rear passenger. So I opted to move them forward a little bit. There was some controversy over whether or not I was exceeding angles on uh, an FAA uh, requirements for seat belt and shoulder harnesses. I can assure you that after reviewing the documents in the FAA manual on uh, repair, aircraft repair, that I am within the five degrees to 30 degree range. And I kind of split the difference between where I was intending on putting them and how far back they originally were shown uh, on the drawing. So you can see here I'm prepping up the bolt hole and uh, getting those uh, doubler plates installed as well as the bolts that will actually support the shoulder harness. Now keep in mind this is not a sleek smooth aircraft and that's exactly how they were designed to have those bolts on top so yes it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it's a it's a super duty and it's made to be tough and uh, that's the way these seat belts get mounted up. Right here I'm just removing the uh, brake pedals and brake cylinders after I got them all fit up and everything uh, appropriately sized. I decided I was going to go back and uh, remove all the interior components and do a, a proper priming job on there. Here I'm installing um, the angle for the center console. Uh, I've already got the nut plates installed, but I've got to do a notch here for the gas later to install in that bottom center section. And then I'll go ahead and rivet those in permanently. Just a couple quick snips and a little bit of smoothing on the, the sander and these were nice and uh, cut out to fit the gas later. Again here, now it's time to install the center console angles in the bottom plate. I'm going to go ahead and click all these up and get this uh, center section permanently riveted so that I can finish up priming the interior. Uh, and I'll do that after I remove the remaining components like the seat rails and a couple other items. Uh, and then we'll make sure we uh, clean up the inside of the interior and get it painted. Here just scuffing up the interior of the uh, cockpit with a Scotch-Brite pad so it'll accept uh, new primer. And uh, I went ahead and got that all rinsed out, blew it out with air, drained it out, and waited till the next day. And it was plenty dry enough to uh, work with. Well, with everything going on in the shop today, look what else showed up. The firewall forward kit. So let's get cracking and see what's in this crate. Hey, more paper. All right, guys. Well, the firewall forward kit box was completely empty when I opened it up. There was absolutely nothing in there. No, I'm just kidding. So let's take a look what was in there. We have an engine mount. We have exhaust pieces. Baffle kit. Heat option kit. Mixture control. Throttle. 
various tubes and piping for oil remote oil filter kit and oil to the engine shock mounts engine bolts all this will be going into more detail on we got a baffling material oil cover hardware and oil cover stainless steel exhaust again tubing we have the oil the remote oil filter mounting bracket we have our alternate air source with alternate air cable our oil cooler and our airwolf oil filter kit which again is the remote kit for the super duty so all of this was in there oh but wait there's one more item look at this bad boy nice gel coated engine cowling again for those of you who do not know we are putting in the 195 horsepower titan experimental il370 in this aircraft so should have plenty of power very nice system we're going to go into more detail on some add-ons that we're doing working with some manufacturers to get the most efficiency out of the engine and we'll be talking about that in a later episode but guys you're not going to want to miss these episodes think things are happening fast we're moving along parts are coming in things are out at powder coat again so as soon as those come back we're back to building and back to building big, big time so stay tuned you're not going to want to miss these episodes all right we've got the center console angle riveted in permanently we've got the seat rails out i've just got to finish riveting right here and then decide what i'm going to do with the armrest as far as riveting first or riveting after and then we're going to get this thing masked off and get this whole interior final sprayed and then we'll start putting it back together again all right guys well i've got a lot to get through here today i got a lot of stuff to sort out I appreciate everybody watching the channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, keep leaving those comments. I'll do my best to comment, uh, reply to every comment. And I do appreciate the, uh, the feedback as well. If you think I'm doing something incorrectly, let me know. I know I had some questions about a couple things on there and I think I've addressed those uh, enough. But again, I appreciate everybody tuning in and watching the channel. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you like and subscribe and share the video with other people making uh, building airplanes. And again, it's Adam with AeroWorks, and we'll see you on the next video.